The announcement of the Iron Yaller Horn got me thinking about a topic that has been prevalent over the past year of Destiny, Year 2. The topic is with regards to the power of exotics over the past year, and their apparent lack of value or importance compared to the previous year. To a very similar extent, you could extend this message to raid weapons too on top of exotics. In year one, some exotics were pretty highly regarded because of their power. You had stuff like The Last Word, Thorn, G-Horn, Suros was really strong at the beginning, Vex Mythoclast had really strong periods, Plan C was really reliable, Truth was up there and still is, but I often hear the argument that year one exotics felt better than year two because they were absolutely more powerful than legendaries. And while I think that's true to an extent, I think it's a bit exaggerated. People act as if most of the exotics in the game in year one were top tier and that really wasn't the case. Looking back at my old House of Wolves tier list, which was about June 2015, the exotic hand cannons and truth were the only things that received an S tier ranking in most categories. Although stuff like Mida and Red Death started gaining popularity towards the end of year one. Either way, I will say that the PvP meta was overwhelmingly dominated by those hand cannons for the most part. Anyway, so the argument is that year one exotics felt more sought after because of their power compared to year two, where exotics are just kinda there. In year two, there doesn't feel like there's a small set of exotics that people really strive for. There aren't many exotics that people are actively chasing for their power. They're mainly for collection reasons, and people regard this as a bad thing. I would agree with this to an extent. The G-Horn, while being overpowered as hell, created this frenzy among the community in the game. It was the thing to get, and there wasn't really a year two G-Horn, so to speak, which is both good and bad. Although I will say that the exotic swords are basically the closest thing that we have to G-Horn. Something like Razelighter probably deals more damage percentage-wise than G-Horn over a short period of time, yet it isn't as revered as G-Horn. No year two G-Horn, metaphorically speaking, is good because we don't have overpowered weapons roaming around, but bad because there wasn't that thing that rallied the community over a long period of time. Yeah, we had stuff like Sleeper Sim and Touch of Malice, which were cool community building moments, but they weren't G-Horn. You use Touch of Malice for a couple of bosses in the raid, you use Sleeper Sim for maybe Oryx and for otherwise screwing around. They're pretty good weapons, but they're not the thing that you're gonna use for everything, which is, once again, both good and bad. In year two, there is significant weapon parity, much more than there was in year one. In year two, you can go into a raid, into the Crucible, be sans exotics, and you'll be just fine. Hell, one of the best weapons in the game for Crucible right now is a vendor weapon. My basic raid loadout contains no exotic weapons. Weapon parity means you can use almost whatever you want and can still succeed, for the most part. Obviously some weapons are going to be better than others, but the gap isn't nearly as big as it was in year one. Options are good. Exotics are better in more specialized situations, to the point where every boss fight in King's Fall, I have a different loadout, which is nice. I don't just run with the same thing. But this makes exotics, these highly glorified powerful weapons, these weapons that are supposed to be the most sought after guns in the game, don't give the same feeling that some of the more premier guns used to. I don't think anything comes close in year two to the feeling of getting G-Horn in year one. Year one exotics felt hard to get because there was no set path to exotics. It was all RNG minus the bounties, even though it felt like getting the bounties was also RNG. So you could have been like me and got a Hawkmoon in the first two weeks, or maybe you never even got one in year one at all. They were never hard to get, they were just random to get. A bunch of year two exotics had a much cooler way of getting them. They were done through quests, but aside from Touch of Malice, none of them felt particularly difficult to earn, although I guess that's more of a side note. So how do you create the G-Horn feeling without completely destroying weapon parity? Well, it's a pretty tough question because it comes down to having a few weapons be really strong and have everything else be garbage in comparison, or having most of the weapons be usable but nothing really being sought after. I personally enjoy having a lot of weapons be usable, not placing a ton of importance on exotics. Exotics are in a decent spot right now in that they're specialized tools. They're not good for everything, but there might be one thing that they're the best at. I think right now, one of the best examples of an exotic weapon compared to a legendary counterpart would be Hawkmoon, right? 
Hawkmoon is basically a straight up damage upgrade to a legendary hand cannon and has more bullets in the magazine, higher damage potential, and in general is just very solid overall. But you can live without it, which is a good thing. Another hand cannon can be just as reliable. A well rolled IS Luna is probably better than Hawkmoon in PvP. Red Death is another decent example, compare it to Smite of Moraine with life support. Red Death is a straight up upgrade from that, but Smite of Moraine is still pretty usable. It's a great replacement for Red Death, which makes Red Death not really feel as special. Whereas with something like G-Horn in year one, it was just in its own league. One thing that I think would be an interesting way to tackle it is to make exotics more of a long-term investment. So for example, there could be an exotic that rewards long-term behavior, like doing the raid a bunch of times on hard mode or something like that. Granted, we do have a couple of those exotics. First Curse requires rank 5 Gunsmith, and your faction class item requires rank 25, which nowadays is tougher to get to. Sleeper Sim had four items that you needed before you could even start the chain, but was otherwise time-gated, with the main quest to actually get the weapon able to be done in a couple of days if you were really slow. However, I don't think that really solves the problem at hand. The problem isn't that exotics, and by extension other items, aren't able to be shown off, aka look at the cool thing that I have that took me forever to get, but rather they don't feel like a significant power increase. You could create a situation where exotics are simply rarer to get, which might allow them to be stronger since their appearance is much less common, but that doesn't really create a balanced situation for PvP purposes, although for PvE it could be managed a bit easier. I'm still surprised to this day that people were okay with the Vex Mythoclast in PvP when it first became known to exist because it was so difficult to get. You know, this Vex Mythoclast. The one with 55 bullets in the magazine, dealing 45 to the body and 56 to the head. I thought people were going to throw a fit, and no one really did. So, I ask you this. Which situation did you like more? Year 1 or Year 2? Would you prefer exotics to be these almighty, all-powerful weapons, only having a small section of weapons be competitive? Or would you rather see Year 2's diminished role in power, but having a wider option of weapons be usable, both legendary and exotic? Or would you rather exotics become more of a status symbol, where they show off major accomplishments and are more rare? Like I said, a very tough question to answer because there really isn't a right answer. It just depends on your perspective. But that's what I got for you guys on Year 1 versus Year 2 Exotics. Just some food for thought now that we know what's on the horizon for Year 3. If you enjoyed this video, a positive rating would be appreciated. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.